As Democrats lick their wounds from a close loss in Virginia, a week later, the dust has settled. Yes, Virginia was a loss, but in other ways, it was still an historic night for Democrats and especially candidates of color. In New York, Eric Adams became only the second black mayor of that city, and the city council now includes the first Muslim woman and the first South Asian Americans elected. In Boston, Michelle Wu became the first woman and person of color to be elected mayor, while Tanya Fernandez Anderson made history as Boston's first Muslim city councilor elect. The list goes on in communities across the country. Pittsburgh elected its first black mayor. Durham, North Carolina elected its first black woman as mayor. Cincinnati made history, electing its first Asian American mayor. Across the map, we saw historic firsts for candidates of color. But perhaps none felt as overdue as the election in Dearborn, Michigan, home to one of the largest Arab American communities in the United States. For the first time, they have a Muslim mayor elect. And let's say it was a long, winding road to this moment. From the 1940s to the late 1970s, Dearborn's mayor openly advocated keeping ethnic communities out of the city. And in 1985, mayoral candidate Michael Guido, who won the election that year, circulated a campaign flyer addressing what he called the Arab problem. How times change, and in a good way. Today, Dearborn has its first Muslim, first Arab-American mayor-elect, former Democratic state lawmaker Abdullah Hamoud. He joins me now. Thank you so much for joining me on the show tonight. Congratulations on your victory. You dedicated part of your acceptance speech to any young girls or boys who have been ridiculed for their faith or ethnicity. What does this moment mean for you and for the Arab American community in Dearborn? I'm going to take a note from the previous guests and hold my thanks to the end of the interview, uh, firstly. Um, I think the note about uh, for young girls and young boys, you know, I, when I first ran for office, I had many uh, members of the Arab and Muslim community approach me and ask me to change my name, saying the name Abdullah would be too difficult uh, in order for me to campaign on and try to win public office. And so my message was one that you need not change your name, change who you are or change your faith, that you can be proud of your identity. And you can be as successful as anyone else if you're willing to work hard, localize a message, knock on the doors, uh, and try to go on and endeavor to give back in public service. Abdullah, we live in an age where Democrats are being told not to overemphasize identity politics, not to obsess over diversity or issues of race. How, in your view, does representation matter? You certainly want to build um, uh, a bench of individuals who are qualified. And it's important that we say that there are qualified individuals who happen to be minorities. There are qualified individuals in the city of Dearborn who happen to be Arab American and Muslim American. That's what it means to, you know, to play, to ensure that we have uh, representation. Um, this idea of identity politics, personally, I think you just need not shy away from who you are. Um, when I speak to the issues that are impacting working families across the city, I'm not talking about issues impacting Muslims or Arabs or, or, or the African-American community or the white community. I'm talking about the values that we all believe in. I'm talking about the issues that impact each of us. They may impact us differently, but the values in which we believe in are one. And the solution which we present uh, that we hope to put together are bold and innovative, and they're one that will hopefully pan out for the entirety of the city of Dearborn. Abdullah, we just marked 20 years since the 9-11 attacks just a couple of months ago. And now, today in 2021, we have record Muslim representation in Congress, uh, in municipal offices, in state houses. Has there been a turnaround when it comes to Islamophobia in public life in America, do you think? It, it, it's strange that, you know, it's, it's funny, actually, you bring up 9-11. The day after 9-11, I was walking home. I was 11 years old and had a gun pointed at me, and someone said, keep walking before I decide to shoot you Muslim children. Um, and 20 years later, this same city elected, you know, its first ever Arab and Muslim uh, American mayor. Um, I, don't, I think Islamophobia still exists. I think racism still exists. And it's important to note that it's not confined to any one side of the aisle, because the most radical thing that persists uh, in any community is willful ignorance. And what we need to do is uh, ensure that, you know, people have access to information. We need only ask. For anyone who asks questions, I invite them to Dearborn, Michigan. I invite them to Altar Road, where we have the country's largest mosque surrounded by our churches. Um, I invite people to Dearborn, which can serve as the example for the rest of America on how rich and vibrant communities live amongst one another and celebrate the diversity that makes us unique and beautiful. Um, so I, although Islamophobia still exists, uh, the election results demonstrate 
It is not the opinion of the majority here in the city of Dearborn. Just for the record, I have been to Dearborn and the food is fantastic. Uh, I must ask, President Biden is set to sign the infrastructure bill on Monday during a bipartisan ceremony. What does the bill mean for Dearborn, which is the home of one of the oldest auto manufacturers in the country? You know, I am eager uh, for the possibility of the resources that will come down in this historic infrastructure bill and the potential build back better. Um, we already see the impact of the American Rescue Plan Act and what that means for the city of Dearborn, $47 million that we will be able to use in one-time historic funds. I think it is at the local level. I think it is mayors who know how best to utilize these dollars. And so it's my hopes that the bureaucratic, the bureaucratic red tape uh, lessens with time in order for us mayors to make the largest impact uh, for our communities, for our neighborhoods. Just today, we had about a 10-foot sinkhole that opened up uh, in one of our roads due to the catastrophic flooding that happened this summer. And so I'm eager uh, for these resources to trickle its way down to the city of Dearborn in order for us to make investments that really improve the quality of life for residents all across the city. I'm assuming that you don't think the BIF, the bipartisan infrastructure deal, is enough for a city like Dearborn. You need the Build Back Better bill, the much bigger spending bill too, which hasn't passed yet. Well, as the mayor, I'm always going to advocate for as much as I can get. Uh, and so all the legislation that can possibly advance its way through uh, Congress, we're advocating for, as well as at the state level, because we know the, a portion of the dollars will obviously go to the state for them to you know, flow it down to the county and down to the state, uh, or down to the city, excuse me. And so for those resources to be made available to us only means that we'll be able to touch more lives yeah. and solve more problems at this point in time. So I'm going to jump in. We're almost out of time, but I've got to ask before I let you go. When you were first sworn in as a state representative in Michigan, I believe your Arab American mother leaned into you and said, <laughs> I still wish you'd become a doctor. What does she think about you becoming mayor now? Uh, she is very proud and very excited, but I would lie if I did not say she still asks me if I would be willing to go back to medical school at some point in life in order for ha her to have, you know, the immigrant <laughs> mother, for her to have that one physician son. So still top of mind for her. It's, uh, uh, I feel, I feel you. I have a similar <laughs> situation. Abdullah Hamoud, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on your victory. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.